looks very different. Um, and in traditional class, and, and actually many of my classes I still teach mostly in a traditional way. Um, you know, I'm at the front of the classroom, sort of the, everybody is sitting facing me, I'm working at the board, I'm writing and talking, and I'm asking them questions, but it's all sort of everybody's looking at me the whole class, and I'm, I'm the one that's doing the stuff. In this class, I'm hardly ever at the board presenting material. I, I, in fact, don't really lecture at all, except for maybe the first day or so, and that's just to give them an idea of what it means to prove something. There's sort of two different types of days in my class. There's a worksheet day, or there's a theorem presenting day. So on the worksheet days, um, they've moved their desks around to sit in a group, and so they're working in their groups, in groups of maybe three to five students, and I'm sort of wandering around the classroom, kind of listening in, but trying not to intrude too much, letting them do their work. If they have questions and kind of wave me over, I'll come over and listen to what they're doing, and, and I try not to give answers, but I try to maybe suggest something else to try, or if they say, look, I think this is right, and if I know it's not right, I can say, well, why don't you think about this example and see if it works in that situation. Things kind of like that so that they are still discovering and refining things themselves sort of with my guidance. That's pretty much my job. I sort of listen in. I, I kind of check in with them, make sure they're mostly working on the right track. And then on theorem presentation days, I'm sitting in, in the in a chair just like the rest of the students who are not presenting. Whoever is presenting is front and center um, at the board or at the document camera presenting their proof, and I'm sitting usually towards the back of the classroom listening to the proof. And then after the proof is presented, there's time for the class to ask questions, suggest improvements, those sorts of modifications. And so I try and, again, defer to the students to make those comments first. I'm also evaluating the proof myself um, and thinking about things that might need to be fixed, but I'm hoping that those will come from the students and not from me. And generally they do, depending on the class. If there's something really kind of glaring that they haven't caught that I think needs to be talked about, then I'll try and kind of prompt that in some way. That's something like, well, let's take a look at this part right here. Let's read that again and, and see if we agree with that, something like that. I actually like it a lot better. <laughs> I, I think Partly it's my personality, but I don't really like being the center of attention, and I've sort of had to overcome that in many years of lecturing to classes of 30 or more students, and I sort of have to adopt this kind of role of teacher, but I'm much more comfortable facilitating rather than lecturing, and I really like, I, I like helping the students to learn themselves rather than just telling them the information. And I have always felt more comfortable, I think, working with small groups or one-on-one, -on -one, and so this allows me to do that as well. I find it very rewarding. Um, it's really the, my favorite way to teach. Um, it does take a lot of, it, it's sort of one of these things that it, it seems to take a lot of work in preparation, I mean, to, to if, especially if you're making your own materials. Um, to develop all of that beforehand, but then once you're actually teaching the class, it sort of is easier because they're doing most of the work in class.